Okay, so for our WTFFF listeners, this is the video companion to the 3D Printer OS interview, so you can get a, a view of all that's possible with 3D Printer OS. We thought you'd really appreciate this. All the data and how it works. So Aaron, take us away. My pleasure. So this is Aaron from 3D Printer OS. Uh, in case you've not ever been in the 3D Printer OS system before, what you are looking at uh, is what is known as the dashboard within the within the portal. Uh, this dashboard is, is the free data that we provide to kind of everybody aggregating everything that's occurring in our system. So this number here is the total amount of hours that have been printed through 3D Printer OS. Uh, I guess this is somewhere around 10,500. Um, you know, this is the total amount of prints. This is how many printers and just how much materials you used. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of a world map where those printers are centered. Uh, and you're seeing, you know, New York, California, the Netherlands, uh, you know, Estonia, Ukraine, places like that. Uh, and this is just, you know, aggregate data from different things. You know, our top users, our top printers. Uh, from there, uh, each individual user can also see all of their own data. Um, so I can actually see my past prints. I can see, you know, what printer I made it. Uh, this is actually an animated GIF of this last print. This happens to be a duck in this case. I can see how much filament was used. And uh, as I mentioned before, you can see this estimated time versus the actual print time. Um, so you have kind of can keep a live beat on that. And you can see how each job went. Um, so you can see, you know, what G codes work, which ones don't. Uh, and this is data we're always adding to. Beyond that, uh, this is the upload button. This this takes in you know STL, PLY, OBJ, uh, and as like the 3MF and new formats come out, we plan on supporting those. This is our search portal. Um, we discussed this briefly on the podcast, but this goes with Yegi and also Sketchfab, um, so it aggregates across both. Where people spend the most time in our system uh, is the My Files portal. Uh, this is where our applications are. This is where our visualization tools are. Let me get up a cool one to look at here. Hold on one second. Cloud Duck. <laughs> so this is the Applications button. Uh, as you can see, this is the STL Editor. This is, I mean, it's one of my favorite visualization tools. It allows you to move, rotate, scale, add files, uh, you know, center them, mirror. And this is that kind of Photoshop-esque thing I was talking about. You know, you can put something inside another object and then turn it on. Uh, so you can really start to build layers on top of layers. Beyond that, one of the most important applications we have is Magic Fix. So Magic, let's actually use a real use case here for Magic Fix. I can take this duck, I can pull him off the print bed, and I can use Magic Fix and it'll automatically put him back for me. So let me just take my duck here. Let's move him. Let's just move him up a little bit. We're going to save him, and we're going to use Magic Fix to put him back on the build tray. That way, if I, you know, someone who's hopping in the system, I just wanted to print an object, I could just automatically apply Magic Fix. It's going to put it on the print bed and just make it super easy for me to print. For today's purposes, I think I have a MakerBot hooked up. So I'm going to pick the Replicator 2. I'm going to click Fix, and it's going to just run that workflow for me. Let's give this a second, let it finish out. Now that fixes a lot of other things besides just on the build plate. If you have oh yeah, this is repair. This is repairing meshes. This is 76 different checks and fixes for the individual file. Um, so this is not only just putting things on the build tray. This is uh, analyzing faces. This is making sure, um, say for instance, you've taken like a PLY. It can convert a PLY to an STL. Uh, it can take uh, objects that are you know way too big for a build tray, and scale them down to the max the max printable dimensions for that specific printer. And we're just always adding new fixes to it. Um, so, you know, hopefully by the next time we talk, uh, we have 102 fixes, not 76. <laughs> um, so we have our magic fix file. Let's actually just go right to slicing it because it'll be on the build tray. Uh, as you can see here, I have my saved settings for the Replicator 2. We're in one of my profiles, so I have my own custom saved settings. You could save your settings here. Um, but for anyone who's more advanced, you know, this is probably familiar from Cura. You can mess with all sorts of different things. For the experts, you know, we still cater to those. You can manually edit JSON. Wow, that's um, beyond my capability, I'll tell you that. You know, it, that's, that's more for our developers than me. Uh, so I'm going to go with my saved settings. I'm just going to slice it. I, I have 230 PLA in there. I'm going to let it slice. And while this is slicing, I'm just going to click over to printers. Um, you know, I can actually live view into all the printers within my network or that are shared to me. Uh, these are my two MakerBots here at the Brooklyn office. It uh, looks like I actually have this one open, so let's start a print. So I'm going to go to my files. Let's take my cloud duck I just sliced. And send it to print. And then after that, I'll just show you guys quickly the uh, the educational work codes we came out with today. So go yeah. print. 
So for the educational institutions that could use 3D printer OS to manage their printers, you they can have cameras set up on those different printers and you know across the mm -hmm. campus and see so, what's free and what's not, right? Exactly. So actually, well, just while I'll click over in a second, but uh, we'll live you into this. As you can see, the file is downloading. It's kind of tracking in for this left side. But this is what the uh, workgroup codes and kind of data side looks like. So this is pretending I'm like an organizational admin for a school. I can click into my kind of admin status and I can create a work group. Um, you know, this is something I can share with my students, something I can, I can have a design class, uh, uh, an engineering class. But for today's purposes, let's create, you know, the hazard class. So this is the hazard group. Uh, I can either give those students queuing or print permissions. Um, that definitely matters. For some schools, you know, you might have two super admins who can print, but, you know, 100 students who can only queue. Uh, and that's important because, obviously, if you were using SD card, you know, you're keeping track that way. This way, the jobs are just sent. Uh, admin can do them at their own volition. You know, they can start them from their phone or iPad. They don't have to be in the lab. It's, it's really easy for them to kind of manage that workflow. Or they can really wait because they need to switch out the filaments and the exactly. maintenance. So. Mm -hmm. And the job's not forgotten because they stay in order from when they were sent. So say someone sent something on a Tuesday, admin comes in on Thursday, you know, they're not skipping that person in the order. It's just they can choose on their own volition. So let's create our code has. All we need to do now is a take our printer because there's no printers and no users in this. I'm going to add my MakerBot here, one of these BK ones, to the hazard work group. Click save. And I'm going to go actually sign back out and sign in to a new name, and I'm just going to add these printers. So right now, the has access code, uh, even right now, if you guys logged into 3D Printer OS, you could add this code. So let me actually just open an incognito window. I'm going to log into my account and uh, add the hazard printer. Let's take that. Let's go to printers. For a student, all they need to click is add workgroup access. So let me actually close out a bunch of these printers so you guys can see this be added. As you can see, I have quite a few printers. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add my workgroup code. I'm going to connect to the workgroup. Connecting. It's this one right here. It's the BK desk's left side. So, so as you can see, it just makes it really easy for a student to access that printer. Um, and from our little piece from before, as you can see, we could actually live view into the, the Cloud Duck printing. Um, so you can see this is kind of live viewing in. And it's getting started. There you go. Exactly. It just finished heating. So that's kind of the super high level. Um, the last piece of that important part for the school side uh, is the reporting. Um, so as you can see, this is user reports, printer reports, usage reports, and also for billing. Um, and, you know, we can get more granular at a later date. But this allows admins to even do preventative stuff. You know, you can look at a printer, uh, say, for instance, this left side uh, one here, see that there's been 13 hours, um, say at 100 hours I wanted to service that printer. It lets admins start to be preventative instead of, you know, uh, fixing only when it's broke. The goal is if a printer's done 200 hours, you know, I need a reminder sometimes. Go check my belts. Go pr fix my printer. Go check so, my extruder. <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. change out my nozzle at 500. Whatever my rules are, it's something that allows schools to really comfortably bring in 3D printing and, and manage that process. Um, and the last piece, which is always super important to us, is 3D printing is a social thing. It's something that we, we share. It's something we talk about. Uh, we've tried to make it so people can, in the application, communicate with one another. Um, you know, say an admin has a problem with maybe one of the student's prints, you can let them know in the system. You know, you can share screenshots. You can really work with them to help them improve. Uh, I added you earlier, Tom, but, uh, you know, I can just ping you right now. Tom, your print has started. And similar to, like, Facebook Messenger, you know, I could send that app message when you log into your next time into 3D Printer OS. You're going to see, hey, you know, your last print wasn't successful. Tom, come check me out. Come meet me at my desk. Just allows an admin to really build out that social piece of the platform. Because the bottom line, 3D printing is fun. It's an awesome thing to do, and it's fun to share when you make stuff. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's really rich and, and makes it simplified. And, you know, it's not just educators. It's enterprise solutions as well right. because it's a it's a ordeal in terms of managing it. Exactly. And, and beyond this, you know, we're also working to help uh, the enterprises in different pieces. If they need something custom, that's something we try to work with them on too because 3D printing still isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. So we do find different people need different things. Yeah. But this is the super high level. I mean, if there's anything in particular, you know, feel free to reach back out. But, you know, thank you guys for having me on the show. And it's, it's always a pleasure to talk 3D printing. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to show us and, and our listeners uh, sort of a, a tour 
of yeah. the reality of 3D Printer OS. Very helpful. So thanks again, Aaron. We really appreciate it. And uh, keep us posted on 3D Printer OS's progress. Thank you, guys. Bye. -bye.